So how do you exactly find the domain of a logarithmic function? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. You probably remember when you learn how to graph logs that you get a graph that looks something like this, where it's approaching the y-axis, but it doesn't touch, it doesn't cross. This is like a vertical asymptote. And you notice that the graph is to the right of the y-axis, or you could say x is greater than zero. But here we have a little bit more complicated uh, logarithmic function. And so what you can do is you can take this quantity that's in the parentheses here, that's grouped with the log. That quantity there, that argument, has to be greater than zero. So what you can do is make a little inequality. 4 minus x is greater than zero and solve for x. So what we're going to do is just uh, subtract 4 from both sides. Uh, we've got negative x is greater than negative 4. We want to solve just for 1x, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. Uh, we remember when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, this inequality sign here changes direction. And so we can see that our domain or our possible inputs here for x have to be less than 4. Uh, you could also write this in interval notation. If you're uh, using that in your class, it would be from negative infinity to 4, not including 4. Uh, and that makes sense because, say, for example, if I put 3 in, 4 minus 3 is 1. Okay, that's a positive value. But if I put 5 in, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. We can't take the log of a negative number. So great job if you're able to understand this idea. Just take whatever's under, in this group here and make it greater than 0 and solve. That's your domain. If you want to learn more about logs, I've got a more comprehensive video talking about graphing logs and expanding and condensing logs and evaluating logs, etc. Follow me over to that video there and we'll dive in more into logs. I'll see you there.